trial cameras are great for looking at hard to reach areas. For this reason they're placed in woodlands, allowing us to see what happens during the night when no one's around. These trial cameras work by detecting motion, so anything that walks past will trigger the camera to take either a photograph or a video. In the past, various interesting photographs have been taken, and it's a great way to capture nocturnal wildlife that you usually wouldn't see during the daytime. Every once in a while though these cameras detect something strange, leaving the internet wondering what it was that was captured. This recently happened when the owner of this trail camera noticed something strange above a nearby deer. There's not much information to go by, but some websites are saying that the owner was looking at the deer that had triggered the motion sensor, but then could see strange lights above the deer. As the owner continued watching he noticed that the lights started to move, saying that while doing this they kept a strict formation. Six lights can be seen in total, and interestingly those who saw the footage said that they've seen similar lines. These objects are sometimes referred to as triangular graphs, and are actually a well-documented phenomena. There is some confusion though as to what they are. Some have said the lights are part of a single craft, while others have said that they're individuals, which explains why in some eyewitness encounters the lights split off and fly in different directions. This has led some to theorise that there's multiple different versions of these objects that people are seeing. Most who've seen the video have said that it doesn't look like any animal, noting that when spiders and moss fly close to trail cameras, you can normally make out body parts and wings, but in the case of this footage you can see that the object is set much further back from the camera, and that it gets into frame as it comes closer. Due to the objects keeping such a strict formation it's hard to compare it to anything natural, Usually objects that keep these types of formations are man-made, but these glowing objects have long been a mystery, and although various different theories have been presented in order to explain them, as of right now there's not a solid answer for what these things are. Someone made a post on social media asking those who've been in the military to reveal the strangest things they've encountered. One man detailed that he and his team had encountered something odd in the sky, although he didn't disclose the location or his name, saying that he didn't want to give himself away. He said that during the early 2000s, he and his team were patrolling an area at night, and it was during this patrol that they all witnessed something that they couldn't explain. He said that night patrols weren't uncommon, but said that it only made the experience more eerie, saying that he was glad it wasn't just him that was out there, he and his team observed what appeared to be a large pulsating orb, saying that it was bright, was able to pulsate, could move around the sky at extreme speeds without making a sound, and also was incredibly hard to focus on. The other members were just as confused as they couldn't link it to something they had seen. He said the following, I couldn't understand what this thing was, none of us could. Is flying around in the sky at high speeds, stopping and then shooting away again. It was like this thing was searching for something. There was no navigational light that you'd see on a passenger plane or a stealth fighter. In fact, this thing wasn't even in the shape of a traditional plane. It was more like a sphere. During the encounter, the team watched as this thing flew around the sky, pulsating, stopping and then flying away again. They estimated that this object was between 10 and 20 feet, but said that it was hard to make an accurate guess as to how big this thing was. They also noted that it was extremely hard to focus on, saying that one of the team got out their field binoculars and tried to see what this thing was, but he said that no matter how hard they tried they couldn't focus on this object. 
He said it was like this object was giving off something, and this stopped him from being able to get a good look at it. The whole encounter lasted no longer than five minutes, and left each one of the team confused about what they had just witnessed. He said it was also unnerving to see such a thing while they was out in the field. He said that word got back to a higher personnel about the encounter, noting that it wasn't him that told anyone. He said though that he was pulled aside by higher ranking officials and was asked about the encounter. He detailed everything, but when he asked about what they thought it was he was told that it was likely nothing and said that they told him that he won't be talking about this event further. He said that the manner in which they said it came across as almost threatening. Although he said he listened and that the team didn't discuss it further, it only caused him to question it even more. He's not sure whether this was some type of experiment that they'd witnessed by accident, or whether this was a mysterious flying aircraft with him noting that this type of subject is not openly talked about. He said that after going online he saw that he wasn't the only one who had seen something similar, and even said that he'd reached out to people in order to get to the bottom of what it was that he and his team encountered. He ended by saying that he's never seen anything similar. Interestingly, everything that the military official said mirrors what others have seen. These objects are often described as glowing objects, while some just call them orbs. They are notoriously difficult to photograph, as amateur researchers say they give off some type of field that makes them look constantly blurry. They said that it's one of the reasons why these crafts are so difficult to photograph. Many of these eyewitness accounts follow a similar theme, with some of the most recent ones being captured above Turkey. Some describe the object as being a series of glowing lights that stayed in a strict formation, while others said that the lights actually belonged to one craft, saying that this was in the shape of a triangle or a boomerang. Those who allegedly saw the light said that it moved slowly in the sky without making any noise. Not long after this, eyewitnesses started to post their photos online, which in turn caused people from around the world to question what was happening. This caused a hashtag to go viral, with hundreds of thousands of people talking about it and retweeting and liking the images that were posted. What was strange though is that many of these images soon started to disappear, with accounts being deleted. It came as no surprise that people wanted answers for what was happening and questioned why this was happening to people who were merely engaging in conversations. Others have reported that these glowing objects are able to move between things like buildings and forests, saying that they're extremely agile and are much faster than anything we have. These eyewitness accounts and documents have caused a variety of different theories to be put forward in order to explain them. Believers have said that it's obvious that these mysterious crafts are under intelligent control, while non-believers have said that they could be things like natural phenomena, Although many don't believe this as it's obvious that these crafts are being controlled, because whenever they're approached or chased they fly off. As of right now there's no definitive answer for what these crafts are, and how they're able to do the things they do. The forests of our world are some of the most unexplored areas, and this has led researchers to say that we still have a lot to learn. It's also made some point out that there's not that many trial cameras out in these areas, so although we capture interesting videos every year, there's way more that's going on undetected due to there being no cameras around. It's not just strange lights that have been captured on these trial cameras either. Amateur researchers have said that within these areas there resides uncontacted humanoids with some saying that every so often these 7 to 8 foot tall humanoid creatures sometimes make their way to areas that are populated, and this explains why some people sometimes report seeing them. As of right now though we have no definitive proof of these mysterious creatures, with scientists and researchers saying that we need definitive proof in order to say that they are real. That hasn't stopped amateur researchers from sharing their evidence, and in some cases, these photographs do appear to show what looks like large humanoids. 
One person commented on this post saying that they own their own land out in California, and every so often they would see large creatures out in the woods. They said that as they would make their way around some thick brush, they would see these things attempting to hide behind trees. Further saying that on a number of occasions they would approach the farmhouse they lived in. They described the creature as being around seven foot tall, having brown or reddish fur, and also possessing large primitive looking feet. Although they did say that they've never experienced any trouble with them, and that mostly they would just keep to themselves. As of right now is anyone's guess as to what resides within these uninhabited areas. Egypt has long fascinated historians and archaeologists. Its rich culture is still being uncovered, and although much of ancient Egypt had been lost to the sands, each year we manage to find more and more artifacts that help us understand this fascinating civilization. Last year during this C2 project in Egypt, archaeologists said that they had discovered a massive face carved into a mountainside. The mountainside in question can be found at Theban Necropolis, which is an acropolis on the west bank of the Nile. It's known for its ritual burials. The team said that once they discovered the face, and due to the position that it was placed in, it was likely that the face itself would light up during the solstices, further noting that the face would look over the royal necropolis as somewhat of a beacon. The team used computers in order to create an image of what the face would have looked like, but did note that you can still see the face on the mountainside. This area is also quite significant because it's home to the Ramesseum, or the memorial temple of Pharaoh Ramesses II, a king that ended up being very respected, going as far as taking on the title of a god. Ramses II was also known as Ramses the Great. He was the third pharaoh of the 19th dynasty, and led his people into a new era. He was known as a great warrior and was respected by all across his kingdom. One of the reasons Ramesses the Great was viewed as godlike was because of the age he lived to. He passed away in his 90s and incredibly he outlived most of his children. He ruled over ancient Egypt for 67 years and was perhaps one of the most admired ancient kings. Many giant statues of him have been found all over Egypt, with Egyptologists saying that there's virtually no ancient sites in Egypt which do not mention Ramses the Great. Another theory that was shared by the archaeologists was that this giant statue that was carved into the mountainside would actually guard the area, and although the team said that much of the carving has been destroyed, they noted that they could still make out certain areas of the face. The team was made up of researchers from the University of Madrid, and also included archaeologists from the Ancient Egyptian Documentation Center of the Egyptian Ministry of Antiquities. The team didn't just discover this giant face carved into the mountainside, they also found unexplored tombs, carvings and also mummified animals, something that was common during these times with researchers saying that back in 2019 in Luxor, Egyptologists had found 30 wooden coffins, as well as a range of mummified animals at Saqqara. Egyptologist Jose Ramon Perez Aquino said the following, It appears to represent a wigged face, perhaps similar to that of the goddess of Hathor, daughter of the sun god Ra, and although it's not exactly a sphinx because it does not have the body of an animal, it would occupy the same guardian role as the sphinx in Giza. The team said they were fairly certain they know the reason why the carving was damaged, saying that it was unlikely that this was done by something like weathering, and the most likely cause for this damage was vandalism, further noting that similar disfigurations have been discovered across Egyptian sites. The team further said the materials found during the excavation suggest this vandalism was carried out very late, with them saying that it likely happened during the medieval times. The Great Sphinx of Giza is still somewhat of a mystery. The first archaeological dig of the Sphinx was undertaken in 1817, 
but it was some time before that starter had been visited and couched in painting. Around 1798, French painter Vivant Denon painted a picture of the Sphinx, but when it was finished critics noticed something a little strange. Denon had painted a man being pulled out of the head of the Sphinx. Two figures were helping a third out of the cavernous head of the statue, which had been painted side on. Now you may wonder whether this was simply a matter of imagination. Perhaps Denon had wanted to add something a little different to the painting, but of course nobody knew for sure, as it was the 18th century and the beauty of both aviation and drone imagery had not quite been invented yet. However, in the 1920s, aerial photography had become possible, and lo and behold, a hole could be seen going directly into the Sphinx's head, a hole big enough for a man to fit through. Naturally, this made Denon's painting all the more interesting. It appeared he'd actually seen people climbing out of the Sphinx, which begged the question, who is in the Sphinx, and what were they doing? Not a lot is known about the history of the Sphinx, or at least there isn't a lot of definitive knowledge. But researchers have noticed that the head of the Sphinx is made from different materials to the rest of the statue. The head appears to be made out of a man-made substance, rather than limestone, hence the darkness of the stone head compared to the body. Furthermore, the Sphinx's head has hardly eroded, and appears to be smoother than its body, this again points to the idea that the head was somehow interfered with, maybe long before any Western people even knew of its existence. But this still doesn't answer the question of why those men were in the head of the Sphinx. So what do you make of these interesting discoveries? Be sure to leave your questions and answers in the comment section below, and help us to grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.